The adult, as we all know, is below 70. Um, but uh, I guess for the, for the talk itself, it uh, will be just focusing on the specific group. Those are from, uh, from uh, 15 or 14 up to 21. So this is the target uh, of the talk. And how we should treat, uh, should we treat them with sort of like a pediatric approach or with a more uh, adult uh, approach or another unique approach? Oops. the wrong button. <laughs> That's very quick. <laughs> Can you get me back to the first slide? Okay. All right. Great. So let's, let's start with the case and then we'll, we'll just walk you through the, uh, the, uh, the things here. So we have Sammy. Sammy is a 16 year old uh, gentleman who is previously healthy and uh, presented to the ER with uh, one month history of fatigue, fever, and skin bruises. His count, as you could see, had uh, uh, dicytopenia and uh, high WBCs and blood, fl uh, blood film and, uh, and blood, uh, peripheral blood flow showed um, a diagnosis of EML. So the question that came up now is where this uh, patient be admitted to uh, adult floor or to the pediatric floor? As well as who should treat this patient uh, uh, through adult approach or pediatric one? So for, to answer this question, uh, uh, to, uh, in preparation for the talk, we send a survey, a uh, national survey to our adult hematologist asking a few questions. The first one, in your center, adolescent uh, from 15 to 18 with the de novo email usually got admitted in, majority uh, as uh, expected to be admitted in adult. And this is uh, the way of uh, the Ministry of Health and uh, other hospital uh, work, uh, you know, anyone uh, 14 and above goes to the adult. The next question is, uh, such patient usually treated as per our standard of care protocol and uh, the majority uh, uh, of those patients, yes, got it treated on protocols. Uh, and uh, typically that this patient got treated by uh, the vast majority by adult uh, EML protocol, uh, minority by pediatric one. And the, the last question would be very interesting here is asking the question, I think such patient should be treated by, and it was a mixed response. Um, you know, one third said by adult, team and protocol, one third by pediatric one, and uh, one third uh, answer as either one. All right, so the outline of the talk today will be talking about the biology of uh, AML. Is it resembling adult or pediatric, or is it uh, different? Uh, how we should treat this patient, uh, or sorry, what the treatment differences between the adult and, and uh, pediatric protocol, and what are the results of those different protocols uh, uh, being used for them. So start with, with let's go with the biology here. And uh, as we know, there is uh, marked differences between childhood as well as the adulthood uh, through a different um, uh, cytogenetic and molecular alterations. And um, uh, as you could see here, adult in green and, and uh, red in pediatric, there is uh, definitely a different uh, incidence of those uh, genetic alterations. And uh, for example, IDH1 and, uh, uh, is actually, we're not seeing it in children as compared to, to the adult. How about uh, the adolescent and the young adult? And uh, uh, on the top here is uh, the age group, uh, break it down to different uh, uh, infancy and children uh, as well as uh, AYA and uh, adult. And here is the different cytogenetic alterations. And if you focus on the AYA group, uh, as you could see throughout them for the favorable or the intermediate or the uh, unfavorable risk group, they are, there is a different percentage among them. This table, you may see it in a, in a different format in, in this one. As you could see, there's cer certainly an interactions between all of the subgroups, however, each component or each uh, group have a different and unique uh, incidence uh, of those cytogenetic alterations. In addition, 
if you look at the, uh, uh, the impact of certain genetic alteration in different groups, you might see some differences. For example, here is in the pediatric age group about the MPM1. You will see there is a, ma a significant difference if you have uh, a mutant type, which is a favorable cytogenetic, versus uh, the wild type. In adults, you may see uh, some good impact, however, not to the degree that we are seeing in children. If you look at the uh, CBF AML with or without CKID, in, in the adolescent age group, we tend not to see as big differences as is being seen in, uh, in adulthood. So to sum up this point, I guess there is certainly differences in cytogenetic and molecular distribution between uh, 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 you know, ad adolescent and, um, uh, and adults, and that in the preference, however, more importantly, in the prognostic impact of such uh, uh, alterations. And uh, this suggesting an age-related differences in the biology of these uh, diseases. Moving toward the treatment uh, differences and protocols between adult and pediatric, and um, you know, to start with, I'm just going to walk you through uh, some of the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the success that we have in, 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 in pediatric EML, as you could see through a different uh, uh, years, uh, reaching now to the, the recent study in the COG in the children oncology group, the 0531 reaching up to 70 to 72 percent of uh, overall survival. Uh, this has been achieved in a different study group uh, in the uh, UK through the MRC, uh, 10, 12, 15, approaching 72 percent uh, at this age group. And um, uh, when, we, when we are diagnosing uh, in a very similar fashion to the adults uh, in terms of the diagnosis as well as in terms of the risk stratification uh, using this mainly the cytogenetic and molecular operation which is pretty much similar to um, to the uh, to the adult um, how we uh, usually uh, treat those patients or how we risk stratify them as you could see the disease free survival reaching them 50 to 55 percent and those typically um, can be subdivided into uh, different groups either standard or, or low or high based on the cytogenetic and then uh, we're using the MRD to further divide the standard risk into either a low or a high risk. And this is the, sorry, this is upside down. This is the most recently uh, uh, enrolled trial, which is the uh, 1031, um, uh, uh, having a low and high risk group. Um, and there is a specific arm, as you can see in the bottom, for the flit 3 using serafinib which we are awaiting the result of such uh, trial. As you can see, we are using uh, um, stem cell transplantation for, uh, mainly for the high-risk group. All right, so let's then uh, put uh, um, in a table side by side the adult versus the pediatric protocol. So here is the induction. Typically in children, we use two induction cycles as compared to adult uh, one or plus or minus another one if there is still uh, a disease. If you look at the consolidation, we're using multiple agents. Uh, that in contrast to the adult using a single agent. Uh, allogenic transplantation is mainly for high risk in pediatric and for the adult is uh, for intermediate and high risk uh, based on the cytogenetic and uh, molecular operations. And CNS prophylaxis, we're using it uh, in, uh, in pediatric protocol, not much in the, uh, in the adult ones. If you dissect more and uh, taking the standard arm of the uh, uh, North American uh, uh, trials in AML, for example, uh, the AAML0531, which is a pediatric uh, children group uh, one, and the ECOG uh, A1900, you will see that uh, in the, our induction is a little bit different from the classic 7 plus 3. We're using a tobocide as well uh, in those uh, uh, for five days. Uh, and we're uh, giving um, uh, RSC for 10 days in induction one and eight days in induction uh, two with the three doses of uh, Dono at a dose of 50 milligram. Consolidation, uh, as you could see in the pediatric one, uh, multiple agents, uh, certainly high dose RSC is the main player with etobicide, mitoxantrone, and l -Aspa. And uh, uh, as you're aware for the adult, it's a classic high dose RSC. 
So comparing the uh, cumulative doses of different uh, drugs, as you can see here, the, um, uh, for the uh, Duno is uh, we're using a lot of uh, uh, reaching up to 450 uh, as compared to 270 uh, for the uh, uh, adult trial. Cetarabine is uh, way much higher in the adult group as compared to the children. And then uh, etobicide and uh, elaspa not uh, ever used in uh, adult but, uh, and, current, and uh, is being used in the consolidation um, of this. So to sum up the differences here, certainly children are treated with more aggressive regimen intense than adult with the different uh, uh, drugs. Uh, and ALL has been showing that more uh, intensive therapy showing more uh, better outcome. However, is that really true for the EML? So this will lead us to uh, the last point here about the outcome of the EML in, in YA, uh, pediatric versus adult protocol. And uh, I'm gonna go one of the uh, uh, meta-analysis that looked at the outcome of the adolescent and young adult for EML treated uh, by the COG, the Children Oncology Group, uh, compared to the uh, CalGB and the SWAG trial in adults. So this is a retrospective meta-analysis uh, looking at the AYA with the AML to determine the differences in outcome exists following treatment on pediatric versus adult oncology uh, treatment regimen. And uh, there is a lot of patients, as you can see, more than 500 with AML aged between 16 to 21 were treated uh, in those trials. Uh, uh, for the de novo uh, AML uh, on uh, a long period from 1986 uh, to uh, 2008. And as you, you would expect, that would be a, a different trials, uh, even for each group, like for the children, there will be like a four trials here uh, with a slightly different design uh, as, as well as uh, in, the, in the adult trial. So if you look at the offense free survival, as you could see, the, there is uh, the survival by using the pediatric uh, trial is much better as compared to the adult one. Uh, that also translates into the overall survival with the statistical significant differences. Um, if you look, if you break it down by age, certainly a uh, younger one from 16 to 18 did much better than the 19 to uh, 21. The same thing for the overall survival. However, if you look at the, uh, now the overall survival, as you can see the COG in blue are red as better than the, uh, the adult uh, regimen uh, that have been used. Um, and uh, the relapse rate, as you can see, uh, is lower in the uh, children and culture group trial as compared to the adult one. Having said that, there is certainly a treatment-related mortality by using those intensive uh, treatment, and it's clearly uh, 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 showing that in the COG uh, treatment group, it's actually much higher as compared to the adult one. And you may say, well, that does that translate into overall survival? I mean, the big caveat here in this uh, meta-analysis, the age group is, uh, was a significant. There's much younger patient in the uh, children as compared to the adults. So the COG also looked at uh, their own studies. Uh, now we are using a unified protocol and they looked at the age factor. Does it really matter uh, or not? And certainly younger kids do better uh, uh, for the uh, less than 16 as compared to 16 and 20. And uh, not only that, the treatment related toxicity is actually uh, was uh, higher for the, uh, for the uh, adult or uh, uh, older patient at uh, 18 to 20. Uh, and uh, this is similarly on the more recent uh, updated result of the 0531 and the 03P1. The treatment related mortality that we're facing in AYA is up to 13.3 uh, 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 as compared to uh, half of that in the younger one. So what exactly the causes of this uh, TRM in a different uh, uh, children oncology group? Uh, it's mainly infection, infection, infection. 
And if you look at the different uh, studies, the different uh, uh, decades, uh, you will see across all of those four studies, 56% of the TRM attributed to infections. So there has been an, an aggressive uh, uh, supportive care has been implemented in the most recent trials, which uh, did show some uh, benefit and survival benefit. And uh, I'm just going to show you some of the local uh, national uh, study that uh, done here uh, in Jeddah through the National Guard, through our colleague uh, uh, Dr. Wasser Justinia, looking at the two different era uh, after implementing uh, aggressive uh, supportive care, including uh, antifungal, and uh, 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 um, keep admitting those patients till they actually recover from the intervening. And you, as you could see in the era number two, which is the gray line, is the more t the TRM uh, uh, is actually much lower. This is for uh, for children. So, which approach we should pick, adult or pediatric, based on this meta-analysis? Well, clearly that. Uh, for the adult approach, there is no sufficient evidence uh, at this time to treat AYA in adult uh, protocol. At the same time, uh, there is no sufficient evidence to treat those patients again in pediatric protocol. And certainly we need clinical trials uh, to answer such questions. And this is a big challenge because enrollment in this in clinical trial is not so simple. And if you look at the recent trial, the percentage of those AYA get enrolled is actually very uh, low as compared to the children, for example, 90%. And if you look at the age group, ranging from 1% to 10%. So that might be challenging to uh, conduct. To, so to sum up this point here, if there is no prospective uh, studies to guide the optimal treatment approach. Pediatric protocol, although may show some uh, promise in terms of better uh, uh, overall survival, however, it come with lots of uh, TRM. So, uh, uh, if you're going to use that, use uh, very aggressive uh, supportive care that has been implemented in such protocol. Adult protocol, although it's less intense, however, it's uh, uh, coming with an re uh, increased relapse rate uh, as well as induction failure. The, this is not the only challenges for those uh, age group uh, which protocol to use, but there is definitely other things we need to factor in uh, in choosing the right treatment for those patients. Uh, psychosocial and compliance issue is a big issue for this uh, as compared to, for example, children. And we see this uh, very clearly in our, uh, in our world. Uh, fertility, we have to pay attention to it because remember, there's almost 50% of those patients, they will survive. And when they survive, they have a long life ahead of them. So we have to uh, pay attention to that survivorship again and balancing uh, the risk uh, of different chemotherapy and secondary malignancy and um, um, toxicity uh, uh, whenever we choose those, uh, uh, those regimen. So how can we get, uh, do better for this? And this is some uh, brainstorm strategy for this is Either we, you could establish an AYA center of excellence, um, uh, or you could refer those patients to a, a center that had uh, excellent experience in dealing with those patients from a different aspect uh, where they have adult as well as pediatric uh, hematologist uh, uh, with the different uh, team members, including uh, the psychosocial uh, support. Uh, clinical trials certainly needed, however challenging to conduct. And all effort has, uh, and, uh, uh, has been uh, uh, toward decreasing the TRM has been, uh, should be utilized. And uh, further refinement of treatment by uh, uh, try using uh, some targeted therapy as discussed in the previous uh, uh, lectures. So let me conclude here by saying that uh, AYA is a unique group um, of patients, uh, and uh, certainly they differ in their biology, psychosocial challenges, survival, uh, and in other important aspects from children as well as from adults. Although may be treated by adult or pediatric, however, those are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, ideal, and uh, certainly such group deserve a specific approach uh, uh, for future.
So where are we going to go from here? I mean, I think uh, this is one of the last questions that we send it in the survey. As a center, I think we're willing in participating in national treatment approach for this group. And uh, the majority answer yes, we should be thinking about those groups. And it's uh, an opportunity, especially in the kingdom here, that most of those patients, um, you know, we have a, especially for 14 to uh, 21 years of age, uh, that can be uh, having a lot of opportunity to, uh, to dialogue between the pediatric as well as the adult colleagues to uh, utilize the best approach for them and to study them, uh, starting from what has been done as a retrospective and then moving ahead to enrolling them into a common agreeable uh, treatment plans. And I think with that, I'm thanking you for, for your kind attention.